Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be working on this image from Ireland's Copper Coast, taking it from here to here. I had a couple of objectives when I, when I was taking this image, when I was framing up for it. The first thing was that I wanted to have a gap between this large rock in the foreground and the two uh, sea stacks here in the middle ground. And I wanted to be able to see this rock in the distance in between the two sea stacks. So this required getting up onto an elevated position. I climbed up onto another rock and I shot with a wide angle lens, uh, 20 millimeter on the Fuji GFX, which is the equivalent of about 16 millimeters on full frame. So I have all the elements in the place that I want them, but unfortunately shooting with a wide angle from the elevated position means that these two rocks here are nothing like as dominant as they are when you're there in person. So in order to correct this, I'm going to use the transform tool. So we'll click in here and there are two controls that I'm going to use. The aspect, which I'm going to slide to the right, which as you can see, pulls in the edges of the frame and stretches the image taller. And then I'm going to use the vertical, which I'm going to pull to the left. And again, just gives us that extra feeling of depth in the rocks. And it's just a question then of playing around with the amount on each of the sliders to get it as a kind of, as a fair representation of the scene. And I think that's probably a, a good representation. This has left us with white borders, as you can see. So I'm going to just get the get Lightroom to crop those out by clicking the Constrain Crop button there. OK, so now we have the image looking as it looked to me on the day. And now the next thing is to go in and start doing the, the basic corrections. So we'll go into the basic panel, change from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This straight away brings a bit of extra color in and opens up the shadows a little bit, I think, as well. And uh, then from there, I'm going to go in, just take the shadows up. And I'm going to do local adjustments from here. The first I want, thing I want to do is just to tone down this area here on the right. It's a little bit brighter than the rest of the image. So this is just to balance things out. So we will hit the radial gradient, drag it out here, just into that area there, and take the highlights down ever so slightly, just to keep it all looking at a bit more even. Now the next local adjustment that I'm going to do is to select the sky, and I'll use the dehaze slider just to bring out those clouds a little bit more and to compensate for any noise that the dehaze might have created, I'll slide down the texture and the clarity a little. The next thing that I'm going to do is work on the, the white water in the foreground. So I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to click color range. And I'm going to try and find an area where I can select, where I get a good selection of the water. That looks pretty good. I can refine this using the refine tool here, dragging it more to the right. That's given me a really good selection of pretty much all of the white water, but it's also given me the sky. So we'll just simply hit subtract and click select sky. And now I have all of that white water selected. And the first thing I'm going to do is just bring up the texture a little bit. And I'll take up the whites. And from here, I'm going to work on the rocks. So I'm going to create another new mask. And this time I will click luminance range. And I'll select drag an area on the rocks here. And that's given me quite a good selection on all of the rocks as well. So for this, I'll use clarity. I prefer clarity for things like rock, where the texture of the thing you're trying to sharpen up is coarse. Whereas with the water, I prefer to use texture. I think it just gives a more subtle result. What I might also do, because everything is quite blue in the in the, the rest of the image, I might just bring up the temperature on the rocks very, very slightly. Just to create, again, a little bit more separation. This color contrast, any types of contrast in an image really give you a sense of depth. So that's it just separates the rocks out from the from the water a bit more. I'm going to create another new mask now from a linear gradient from the, the bottom of the image just to lighten that up a little. 
I'll try and expose you first of all, let's see what that does. Bringing up that water a little bit more, I like that. Might take the whites up a little as well. From here, the next step I'm going to work on is another linear gradient, just in the top, maybe 10% of the image, stretching out a little bit. Uh, trying not to get it onto the rocks, I'm gonna bring that up a little bit away from the rocks. So take the exposure down very slightly, just to hold in the top of the image. And following that, I will do a radial gradient. I'm gonna drag out from the center. Out pretty much as far as I can go. I'm going to have to actually zoom out a little bit, control minus on the keyboard to, to zoom out and stretch this out quite far. Really what I want to do, I'm actually going to hit control minus or command minus again. I want to just have it that the feathered area, which is the area between the two ovals, is just clipping the edges of the image. So if I get that position there so that we get a little bit like that, I'm now going to invert that mask and I'm going to drag the exposure down. And that's just creating a little bit of a vignette. If I slide it forward and backwards, you can see the, the effect. Uh, and it's good to do this with the image quite small because you can easily go over the top of the effect if you, if, if, uh, if you do it at full screen. Okay, now from here, I'm going to go back into the main panel and I think I do a calibration bring up the blue saturation it always makes the image pop a little bit into the basic for a few more global adjustments I'm looking at the histogram here and it's tailing off on the left and it's tailing off on the right so I can I know I can get away with a little bit more contrast so I can either just bump up the contrast slider but that's I think is a little bit too much so what I'm going to do is pull down the blacks just a little minus 14 there and bring up the whites to really make that image pop. And there we have it. I think there's maybe one more little tweak we can do in the HSL, which is the hue, saturation and luminance. And I'm just thinking about the color of the water, the seawater, the aqua. And if I slide up the saturation and that, and maybe bring up the luminance on it a little bit as well. Now the next thing we could do would be just maybe to do a final crop. Because we have the original aspect ratio at the moment, but I think maybe if we take it to a four by five, what that will do is it'll get rid of some of those rocks on the sides. I can come in a little bit further here, and a little bit further here, so that we concentrate our attention on the center of the image moved across a little bit more. We can change the grid by pressing the letter O and that can give us things like the rule of thirds or it can give us a, a grid with what's it five by four or five by five squares. But if we cycle through we can get these crosshairs. And I want to align that cathedral rock bang in the center of the image. And that's very useful to do with things like that. And this has got rid of a lot of the distractions. If I click out of the, the crop tool, this gives a much, much stronger image, uh, much more, your eyes not pulled away to the side, just, just led straight through. We could even go in and use the content aware eraser on that rock there, perhaps. Now let's take that out, do the same thing here, and here. And I'll just press Q to go back out of that tool. And there we have the finished image. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, be sure to hit the like button. And uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you did. And uh, until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon.